handful of Republicans are on top of this. Jeff Sessions, a senator who spoke in Congress today, um, uh, is an excellent example of someone who is very, very aware of this calamity. Um, Lou Barletta from Pennsylvania, uh, Stephen King from Iowa, they're all Republicans. You will not get one Democrat, as far as I'm concerned, to ever address this issue from the viewpoint of law enforcement. It will always be from the viewpoint of, well, you must be a racist if you're, if you're uh, being critical about this. Um, we're all God's children, and mm-hmm. uh, you're a bad person. All this mudslinging, stupid, silly, mindless name-calling, which has made most of the electorate out here, especially me, sick. Uh, sick and tired of political representatives in Congress Mm -hmm. who are there to represent their own party's agenda and not to represent us who put them there. And now we have a president who's going to take the law into his own hands. I would not be surprised if by executive order, waving a magic wand, 30-plus million illegal aliens are now amnestied. Who's ever here illegally is now amnestied, including all these kids. And I hope he gets impeached. I really do. I'll support an impeachment if he goes that far, and I would expect him to. Uh, I've lost all my respect for Obama. Mm-hmm. I used to say nice things about him, but no, no. And and uh, I have nothing good to say about him. I have nothing good to say about the Democratic Party, and I have nothing good to say uh, about 60% of the Republican Party. So now saying that, what's your next question? <laughs> Gee, it was nice talking to you. Thanks very much. No, just just kidding, Jim. Just kidding. I applaud. I, 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 I applaud. Frustration. I applaud you, and I applaud the volunteers that that are part of the Minuteman Project, because what you are doing is you are showing the rest of the United States, and especially those in Washington, that hey, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, and we want to be part of the solution. The fact that we're talking about 30 million illegal immigrants that might receive the the amnesty of the executive pen doesn't doesn't that ring to be a financial fiasco on the U.S. economy to a lot of people? Yes, yes, it's going to affect. I've got a list of 24 of uh, devastating. Um, consequences if we do not enforce these immigration laws. There are too many to go into. That's that, that's a discussion for another day. Any time. Uh, uh, but it, it, uh, the things that are going, the consequences, the dire consequences of this country by not uh, maintaining its sovereignty and by the reckless disregard of our immigration laws is something that will be irreparable very soon if we do not get this under control. Um, I'm talking about cultural changes, demographic changes. Mm -hmm. Um, We are rapidly becoming a Latin American nation because of this. I disagree with it. Now, I will be called a racist for making that comment. That is not racist. Those are the facts. We are rapidly becoming a Latin American nation, and Louis Gutierrez... Why would you be called a racist when what you're doing is just being an American and protecting your homeland? Uh, because that is the uh, well, the, the common mudslinging that people like me have to face. I'm used to it. It doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't really infuriate me. It tells me essentially that I'm going to win this debate. Uh, yeah. I'm glad he or she accused me of that because I'm going to claim the floor with them, and I win every time. Um, all I have to do is whatever I do is stay within the rule of law. And all I have to do is encourage people who engage in uh, f- uh, the exercise of our, f- our freedom of assembly and speech, mm-hmm. an irrevocable uh, privilege, by the way, or right, um, to stay within the r- rule of law. Whatever you do, stay within the rule of law, and you will win the debate every single time, assuming we are a nation of laws. Now that brings into another issue. If we're no longer a nation of laws, then even the First Amendment stands for nothing. I found that out at Columbia University when Dr. Corsi and I were chased off the stage physically by 30 um, 
uh, goons who uh, were students there, and their interpretation of freedom of speech was freedom of speech goes to the meanest thugs wielding the biggest clubs. Um, so if that's really the state of the union, that we have no free speech anymore, and we have no rule of law, Congress should be honest with us and be right up front and tell us, look, ladies and gentlemen, we are no longer a nation of laws. Um, God bless you all and get on with your lives. <laughs> and and uh, But most Americans don't want that to be the outcome of this issue. We want our laws enforced because the rest of us have to obey, obey them. Why, why is there this privileged, almost a celebrity uh, status given to the illegal aliens uh, in an attempt to bring them out of the shadows? Meanwhile, um, uh, keeping uh, behind a smoke screen with propaganda, all of us law-abiding citizens. It tells me that the rule of law, according to Obama and according to the Democratic Party, yes, I'm indicting that entire party. I used to be a Democrat. Now you know why I'm not. According to the uh, Democratic Party, we are no longer a nation of laws. We are a nation of mob rule, and that's 30-plus million illegal aliens currently occupying U.S. territory, and it's time this idiocy stopped, period. We have not had a president or a Congress who has taken our immigration policy and immigration law seriously since Dwight Eisenhower. He left office in 1960. It's been 55 years of the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And you think I'm angry? You ought to see the emails that I get from my supporters. We have a population in this country that sees this one issue as the source of their national anger. There is so much hatred and so much divisiveness coming out of this issue of pandering to an mm -hmm. illegal alien population uh, that I am not, I am actually shocked that we haven't had lawlessness countering this. I think that might happen. Yeah. I'm not going to encourage it, but I can guarantee you I will be helpless to stop it because we are ladies and gentlemen, living in a nation where the rule of law means nothing to our Congress, to many of our state governors, and certainly to our president. But they are not the first. It started with John Kennedy. After Eisenhower left office, this whole thing started, but it's been incremental over 55 years. Now it's reached a uh, boiling point. All right, Jim, you and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Thank you very much for joining us. Exonation, uh, Jim Gilchrist is my very special guest. He is the founder and president of the Minuteman Project. Their website is www.minutemanproject.com. And I'm sure Jim would love to hear your comments. After all, it is we the people, not I the person. And we the people have the power to make things happen, make the changes. And it's about time we got off our buffs and did something about it like Jim and his people do. We'll be back. Don't go away. My name is Rob McConnell, and I would like to tell you about a very special lady that I have the pleasure of knowing, and that's Miss Sylvia Anthony. Sylvia Anthony believes the golden years are a time to gear up and get busy, not relax and take it easy. She has faced many hardships in her 84 years, but they have made her stronger and more determined. As founder and president of Sylvia's Haven, a shelter for women and their children near Boston, Sylvia has helped transform over 1,086 lives in the past 27 years, not only with housing, but also providing direction as to where they can go to develop the earning skills they want and need to live free from difficult domestic situations. Sylvia's Haven is everything to Sylvia Anthony, even calling it her magnificent obsession. Women who qualify for the program at Sylvia's Haven receive assistance via guidance counselors to find the appropriate job opportunity. Women and their children may remain at the housing for up to two years. At the end of this time, or sooner, a woman who is successfully employed and has an apartment or home may leave Sylvia's Haven to begin a new and independent life. Now this is where you come in to help make Sylvia's dream into a reality. 
Sylvia's dream is to have a Sylvia's Haven in every state to help as many women and their children as she can and to help this dream come true. A crowdfunding site has been established which can be accessed at www.sylviasdream.org. Now that's www.sylviasdream.org. With your financial help and support, Sylvia Anthony will continue to help those in their time of need, not only in the Boston area, but with her dream of having a Sylvia's Haven in every state of the United States. Your help is needed to make Sylvia's dream come true. Please visit and give at www.sylviasdream.org. Once again, www.sylviasdream.org. And remember, the only difference between a dream and reality is just doing it. We need your help to make Sylvia's dream come true. Visit www.sylviasdream.org. Once again, www.sylviasdream.org. For the Exxon Radio TV show and the X Chronicles newspaper, I am Rob McConnell. Now you can dial in to listen to the Exxon Radio Show from anywhere in the world with Rob McConnell 24-7, 365 by dialing 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080. If you have a mobile phone or landline, the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is now at your beck and call at 213-401-0080. That's 213-401-0080, 24-7. 365. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, Jim Gilchrist is our very special guest. He is the founder and president of the Minuteman Project. His website is www.minutemanproject.com. Jim, tell me the... um, what was it that, that was the final push that got Jim Gilchrist to, Gilchrist to say, hey, I'm going to do something about this. I'm going to form the Minuteman Project. Just years of frustration with uh, our political governors and seeing how gutless and cowardly they were. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, it was not the type of leadership uh, I respected in, in our political leaders. Um, uh, I mean, despite um, all the laws that were in place and all the laws that were actually enforceable to stop this problem, um, and Americans expected, put their trust into these political leaders in Washington, D.C., to make sure these laws were enforced to protect all of us. Um, Despite all of that, nothing was being done. I saw Southern California... um, literally being converted from the United States of America to the United State of Mexico. Uh, And that's because the predominant invasion was coming from Mexico and Mm -hmm. California. Now it's still coming, um, as well as from Latin America and certainly South America, the Philippines. I'm sure there are people from Africa coming through Mexico illegally. They've uh, apprehended Ukrainians and South Koreans and Russians. They're coming from all over the world, but predominantly 85% of the invasion has come from Mexico and Central America. And I saw that happening over about a 30-year period in California and thought I would, my goal was to bring national awareness to this issue because the reason it was happening was that our political governors had been laying down a smoke screen all these years and did not want to deal with it. 
out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and their campaign managers would tell them, you don't want to discuss illegal.